Good evening, everyone. My name is Jerry Hasty. I will be your host tonight. Thanks for joining us again. I want to, you know, go over uh, the spirit part of man in this series. Uh, this will be the last part on the spirit man. Then we're going to move into talking about the soul, and then we're going to move into talking about the body. Okay. But this will be the last installment, part five, on the spirit man, okay? And we haven't had an exhaustive teaching on this, uh, but I think we've, we've hit the main points, the general points, and if you've been following along, you probably have a pretty good feel for where this is headed and what we've been saying. And um, so we're going to have a quick word of prayer, and then we're going to get right into tonight's message. And we're going to talk a little bit more about the spirit man. And then, like I said, the next session, we'll turn over and start working with uh, what it's all about with the soul. Okay, so uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that in your word, we find out who we are and what we have in Christ. And that um, by faith, we can apprehend all the promises of God concerning uh, who we are and what we have, and uh, we just, we come before you, and we we pray that you will give us open ears to hear the things you need to say to us tonight. I pray that this uh, these words will get embedded in the hearts of those who are listening, and that uh, you will use me as a conduit, a and uh, someone that will speak the very oracles of God. I, I pray for the anointing to be here tonight, that you will anoint me to speak clearly what you have to say for everyone. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen, we pray. Amen. All right, so let's go back down to our foundational verse, which is in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. And this verse says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. All right, so let's talk about the spirit. Let's go back and, and rehash a lot of what we've already talked about just in brief so that you won't lose anything from this, uh, this part of the teaching. You are a threefold being, you are a spirit, you have a soul, which is your mind, your will, your emotions, uh, you could basically say it's your personality, and you live in this body, you're housed in this body, and you were created in the very image and likeness of God in the beginning, okay? Adam and Eve, when they received their first command from God, it was to not eat of the fruit that was in the middle of the garden, the knowledge of good and evil. And instead of obeying that, at some point, they decided to rebel and commit high treason against heaven. And when they did, obviously, uh, that changed everything, not just for them, but for us, okay? They died spiritually, and then pass that spiritual death on to each one of us. They were initially led by their spirit, and then they started being ruled by the flesh, which is your soul and your body. So we talked about how God, though, had a plan to redeem them even before time began. God, he knows all things. So he knew that Adam and Eve would fall even before he created them. And his plan was to send Jesus to make an atonement for our sins so that the law could be satisfied, the, the justice of God could be satisfied in the death of Jesus because all the sins of the world will be poured out on him. And so that we, by receiving Jesus' sacrifice, could receive salvation and escape uh, a devil's hell. Amen. And so we talked about how God, when we receive Jesus, uh, we get a new heart and a new spirit. And the reason we need a new heart and a new spirit is because your spirit is spiritually dead to God. And you need a new heart because it can't be repaired. 
you know, it's like somebody who comes into the hospital and uh, they open them up and they're like, you know, this is bad, you know, and they can't do the surgery or, you know, somebody's diagnosed with a heart problem and they can't, they can't, they can't have heart surgery. They need to have a heart transplant. Amen. And that's what had to happen to us spiritually. We had to get a new heart. <clears throat> and once we got that new heart and that new spirit, the Holy Spirit comes in and lives and dwells inside of us and with us. Amen. And we spoke about how the heart is the union or the bridge between the spirit and the soul. And whatever you decide in your heart is, is whatever you're leaning towards based on what you're in your heart. So like if you're walking in the spirit, you're, you're leaning, uh, your heart obviously is in agreement with your spirit. Or if you're walking in the flesh, then your heart is obviously in agreement with your soul and your body. Okay. But you are the deciding factor. Your heart is the deciding factor on which direction you're going to go. Okay. And, um, we 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 talked about how uh, when a person gets born again, they, they have to be born again from above. They're born of flesh in the natural, but then they have to be born of spirit, which means they have to be born from above. They have to be born of God. And we talked about how uh, that can only happen when you receive Jesus as your Lord. Amen. And we went on to talk about how when you got saved, uh, your spirit got sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit. That's in Ephesians. Don't remember exactly where, uh, but it's in Ephesians. And it talks about how when you receive Jesus, you were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. And so that seal seals you off from that seals your spirit off from this world and the sins of this world so you may still commit sins in the body because your soul is not meant your not mind is not renewed and your soul is not regenerated like your spirit is but those those sins and and problems can those sins can cause you problems but they won't cause you to lose your salvation because your salvation is not based on your works. Your salvation is based on grace, that God provides grace, and you receive that grace of salvation through faith, okay? And that's why you can't lose the salvation any more than you can be doing good things and gain salvation. You can't gain salvation by doing good things. You can't lose salvation by doing bad things. You can only lose salvation or you can only not receive salvation by not receiving Jesus, okay? Or rejecting Jesus will cause you to lose salvation if that is even possible. Um, but that's what we talked about in our last sessions. Your soul is renewed. Your soul is saved to the, in this lifetime, your soul is saved to the degree in which you renew your mind, okay? Okay. And your body won't be saved until the end. In other words, you've been purchased. Your body and your soul have been purchased, but they haven't been redeemed yet. Okay, that's as clear as I can make it. Uh, but today we want to talk about uh, what it means to be having a born-again spirit. What it means for the believer. What that's like. Okay, what does that mean? Okay, so turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 5, verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. And again, it says here, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, and behold, the new has come. So when you get born again, like I said, you get a new spirit, new heart. And that old spirit, that old dead sinful spirit, is gone. That sinful nature dies with it. Okay, and so you get a new nature, you get a new spirit, and you get a new heart. Before you get born again, you're bent on sinning. You're bent on doing what's wrong. But when you get born again, because you have a new heart, and because your conscience is, 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 is basically receptive to what the Holy Spirit is saying, you will not 
when you do sin, you don't like it. You don't feel good about it. You don't, you don't enjoy it anymore like you once did, okay? And that's because you're born again. It's inconsistent with your new nature. Sin is inconsistent with your new nature. That's why, I mean, I remember when uh, I was newly born again, whenever I tried to go back and do the sins that I did before I got born again, that didn't bother me before I got born again, I found that uh, it wasn't comfortable anymore. I didn't feel comfortable in that lifestyle anymore, or in that in that skin anymore, in that old way of living. So when you get born again, you don't longer feel comfortable living in the natural, in the flesh. Okay. Uh, so what happens to you, and how does God see you when you get born again? Well, let's look down a little further to Second Corinthians chapter five, verse twenty-one. It says, for our sakes, he made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So we see here that Jesus never sinned, but he was made sin because we had sinned. So he took all of our sin upon himself on the cross to redeem us from sin so that it could be a great, it's, it's, it's called the great um, transfer. Basically, Jesus took our sins upon himself on the cross and died for us because that was the penalty that we deserved. And, and in exchange, he would give us his righteousness. Okay? So when you get born again, you're exchanging your sin for his righteousness. Okay? And uh, you say, well, you know, that, what about Isaiah 64, 6 and Romans 3, 9, where it says our righteousness is like filthy rags? Well, yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> our righteousness is like filthy rags. Uh, you know, that, that you've got to understand that in context. And that's talking about self-righteousness. What you are trying to do to earn heaven, what you're trying to do to be saved, what you're trying to do to be good before God, to please him. And that's when it says your, our righteousness is like filthy rags, our righteousness. But when we receive Jesus, we get his righteousness. You see the difference? Our righteousness is nothing to God. But when we get his righteousness, God sees us through the lens of Jesus he sees us through Jesus' righteousness, not ours. Amen? Um, so the righteousness we're talking about here is imputed to you. It's not earned. It's just imputed to you when you receive Jesus. Okay? Uh, let's see what else we have here. Turn with me to Ephesians 4, 24. Paul here is talking about how we need to live as new creatures in Christ and put off the old behavior and the old nature and put on the new self. It says, And to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God, in true righteousness and holiness. So, your born-again spirit is recreated in true righteousness and true holiness. Now, I didn't say your soul was, or your body was. Again, we've talked about this. But your spirit man was born again and recreated in true righteousness and holiness. You're not going to become righteous and holy by, you know, doing things, you already are positionally righteous and holy in God's sight just because you've received Jesus as your Lord. Now, this doesn't mean you shouldn't attain to behave righteously and live holy. That's fine, but that's not for salvation. That's not so you can be saved, okay? That's simply so that you are, are producing the fruit of having the Spirit of God living in you. Amen? And that fruit is goodness and righteousness and holiness. All right? Um, you may say, well, you know, how can I be righteous and holy if I'm still sinning? Well, turn with me to Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. And this is what we were talking about before in the last session. And I, I couldn't remember exactly where it was in Ephesians. Uh, but it says, in him, 
you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. Like I said before, when God looks at you, now he sees you in the spirit because you're not in the flesh anymore. You're a spirit being and you are born again. So he sees you through that lens of Jesus and he sees you as a spirit being that is fine before him because he sees you through that lens of Jesus, okay? When you get born again, the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of you. And we've already talked about this, but he seals you off. There's like a, it's like just, you know, totally sealed off from anything else that's a part of your being. It's sealed off from your personality, your, your negative things that you think and do and the sins that you commit. Because if the Holy Spirit can't live in sin, so therefore, if he's come to live inside of you, he can only live in one place, and that would be your spirit. Amen? So turn with me to one more place, and we'll close for tonight. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. It says, but he who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Now think what that just said. You know, a lot of people read that, and they're like, oh, we become one like him in spirit. No, 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 no. That's not what that says. But he who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. That means one to the exclusion of another. That means one. In the Greek, it means you become one spirit with him. So when his Holy Spirit comes in there and, and it meshes with your spirit, you become one spirit. Amen? So that's all we have for tonight. I've, I've gone through a lot of talk about the spirit, man, because that's the real you. That's who you really are. And, and you have to know who you are in order to deal with the other aspects of your being. For example, once you know that you're righteous and, and, and truly holy in God, and that when you fall and when you sin, that's not going to cause you to lose your salvation. That's not going to cause you to... to um, be looked upon by God in a negative sense because he's seeing you through Christ, then you can address those areas. You can, you can say, Lord, I need to renew my mind. I need to no longer, you know, behave in, in negative manners. I no longer need to be angry and, 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 and judgmental of people and uh, jealous of people. I can renew my mind to what the Word says about those things and no longer have those things in my life. Over time, you change your thinking. Um, it's called renewal of the mind. And once you change your thinking, then you don't have to worry anymore uh, about these areas. You can, you can progress comfortably because you know you have security in your salvation and you're not worried that God's angry with you and ready to strike you down. Let me tell you something, all his anger, all God's anger was poured out on Jesus at the cross. All his anger towards sin, not toward you, because he's not angry with you, but all the anger towards sin was poured out on Jesus at the cross. Amen? So, again, that's all we have for tonight. Uh, if you'd like to get born again, you could pray this prayer after me, and if you do it from the heart, you will get born again. Say, Father, I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. I can't do this on my own. I know Jesus came and lived on this earth. He died for my sins, crucified on a cross, took all my sins upon him, even though he was sinless. He was buried, resurrected, and ascended up to you in the heavens. And so, Father, because of this, I receive Jesus as my personal Lord, and I thank you that he's my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. You said that prayer, you got born again. Then it from your heart, you got born again. Um, now you have to get in, and I say this, I know every time at the end of these episodes, I say the same thing. It's important for you to get into a good Bible-believing church. 
because that's where a pastor is going to be able to speak into your life. That's where you're going to be able to grow spiritually. Amen. So if you need help with that, you can drop me a comment in the comment section and we'll talk about it further. If you live here in Orlando, we'd love to have you join us at our church. Um, just uh, drop me a message on that as well and we'll get you all hooked up. Regardless of where you are at around the world, I can still help you find a, a good church home. Amen. So with that said, just remember, God loves you. I love you. And we'll see you next time.